Hey everybody, Hanku here with my live reaction for Kubera Season 2, Episode 63, 64, 65, and 66. We're going to do the next four parts of Frozen Tears, and then that leaves us four parts to finish off the arc with next week. So yeah, I'm really excited to see what we're getting into with some more deep Gantarva stuff, and while... You know, we'll see. We'll see when we get to my character ranking where he shows up. I don't think Gantarva is like my favorite character in Kubera, but I feel like it's hard to argue that he's maybe not the best well written or the like most well written. The like, again, saying best character is such a subjective thing, but it just feels like so much time and effort and attention has been put into Gantarva's character. And we're just seeing this all come to like this tragic end where he's lost control and is attacking the city. We still have all of our characters that we care about in the city. We have all of the Shura characters that we care about. Agni's getting involved. And I don't think anything bad will happen to Agni. If anything, this is maybe tragic and scary for Gantarva, but I still feel like Gantarva survives somehow. Because I feel like we gotta see Gantarva get some sort of conclusion to what's going on with Shakuntala. He's gotta find out one way or the other, unless we're going super tragic and having, get, having him get taken out before he can get any answers. Uh, also... Teo, I said before, I kind of have the same opinion that I had for going into last week's read-through. Probably dead, but as somebody who's only read, it's so crazy to say, only read 163 chapters. As somebody who's only read 160-some chapters of Kubera, that's a lot, but there's 600-some, right? Or at least 500-some, and... When you think about the grand scheme of things, I don't actually know all that much. So while I think Teo's probably dead, and, you know, I'm supposed to, even if she's not, at this point in the story, I'm at least supposed to believe she's going to be dead. I don't know what kind of, re like, resurrection or healing or anything like that. What kind of magic is possible within Kubera? I just don't, uh, it hasn't been explained to me if anything like that is possible yet. So we'll see where things go. I guess there's not really much else to say that I can't say as I'm reading through. So let's start with this episode and of course I'll always go through and read the afterwards afterward. So we start off with this really, really great, let me make sure you can see it all right, yeah, this really great shot of Gantarva and Agni that we ended off last chapter with. It looks so good. Now we have Frozen Tears Part 6. I'm sure that's Gantarva, but it's too small. Too small to be Gantarva. I don't know how he took Shura form here, but if he adjusted his size on purpose to not destroy this planet, perhaps we can talk things out like last time. Hey, Gintarva, I don't know why you're doing this, but let's have a word. Shakuntala would be so sad to see you like this. Think of Shakuntala and let's sort it out in a peaceful... And he just screeches. Yeah, I don't think he's, like, actually really fully conscious right now. I think he's just lost in the despair of it all. And we have the uh, hyper beam coming out, it looks like. And... Agni is fine. Wow, that was harsh. I just wanted to try, er, I just wanted to talk and he tries to send me to Yama. If he's not in a state to recognize me, he wouldn't have adjusted his size on purpose. And of course, I already get, you know, I didn't really need the note. I like that they add in notes just to help remind you, but we saw that Claude used death magic and it was Yama magic so you can put together there that Yama's the god of death. If he's not in a state to recognize me, he wouldn't have adjusted his size on purpose. Even that, er, then that size is the extent of his power, and he seems to have a problem with using his transcendental skills. It might be possible to stop him by force rather than talk. Hey, you massive lugworm, and it gets his attention. How about catching me rather than attacking humans? Doesn't that sound more interesting? Although it would be hard for a mere lug er, lugworm to catch a god. And we have all of this, uh, I'm assuming, transcendental energy. I'm not even sure what to call the energy in Kubera forming up. Huh, do you really think you can get me with just that? He turns into flame and starts sending out attacks of his own, or at least energy flame of his own, 
to deal with the attacks coming in. Imagine you're just some random uh, person just living out in the world of Kubera and you're just seeing all this go on. Calabloo Magician's Union. Asha, look, that part of the sky is totally black. Is that a storm cloud? It's not a cloud. Yeah, I guess it's not. Its shape is too odd to be. And then there's a huge flash and <laughs> booming. Jeez, I, Asha, this is bad. It seems worse than er it seems worse than it was in Atera. You don't need to worry for now, since a god's taking care of the closed space. Uh, I I see. By the way, how can you be so calm when the Agni is here? Aren't you surprised at all? I already knew about it. The priest told me at the Temple of Earth. Ah, once again, I was the only one who didn't know. <laughs> we can't sit at ease yet. A Terra might be put into danger while the god is here. That's right. A Terra was already hit by the Shuras twice already, on the 10th and the 12th month. This could be the plan of Shuras to lure the god out of a Terra. I don't think so. How could you be so sure? Just intuition. Intuition? I didn't know you'd say something like that, Asha. The problem here is that the god cannot take care of the closed space forever, and I don't think we know who these two are. We might have seen them in the temple before, but I don't remember them if we have. Um, the problem here is that the god cannot take care of the closed space forever. I feel like that's how pretty much every Kubera character ends up, though. It's very rare for a Kubera character to get some, like, grand reveal Usually you just kind of see them low-key, they're kind of part of the background, or maybe as just like kind of a faceless, we don't know if they're important or anything, in a scene, and then we find out dozens of chapters later, oh no, that character was actually really important, and now they're being like used fully in the actual story. Then we need to find a way to solve the fundamental problem before he goes back. Solve. If we kill that sure outside, won't that be the end of all this? Over half of the city, sorry, I'm just laughing at Reesh. Um, over half of the city has submerged, and the damage we received is just too much. We'll, er, we will at least have to sell the body of that Shura in order to restore the city. We know what you mean, but the problem's how to kill it. We suspect it's a Gnostica, right? Even Agni cannot take care of it easily. Then we should aid him with what we've got. I'll let you use all my god class items. What are you going to do? A god is out there fighting for us. Are you just going to sit there and watch? As expected, his regenerating speed is also slower than usual. If I press him a little more, and I feel like the humans could actually mess things up where Agni is still trying to keep things kind of peaceful, and, uh, He's trying to keep things kind of peaceful, and yet the humans could just come in and be like, wow, Ashura is attacking, we have to kill it. And, like, Agni here reminds me of something. Earlier today, I was watching Pyro Prima's reaction. Again, I've really enjoyed watching those because it helps me, um, it helps recap on things that I've honestly forget or forgotten from all the way back in Season 1. And I was talking about, like, the morality in Kubera, and morality is interesting where... I think it was Pate Ardeal who um, said it's like a blue-orange morality where it's like, compared to we humans, it's just so different from what we're used to in the real world that we don't really get their morals. I, like, it's kind of that, but I think it's also that every character in Kubera has faults. There's no just, like, poor, more or, like, pure moral paragons or, like, purely just evil bad people. It's like, I think that Sagata is causing a lot of harm with all of the scheming and plans going on, and Sagata wouldn't be doing that without colluding with Gantarva, colluding with God Kubera, but we see with the flashbacks and stuff, we kind of get where Sagata is coming from. Sagata is doing things that are hurting a bunch of people, but we kind of see where she's coming from a little bit. Even if it, like, even if the grand why of it all hasn't been fully explained to us, you can kind of at least see her perspective in some ways, in that, oh, she was hurt by this or that, and now she is turning that hurt back on others. Um, 
or people like it's like Lee's is kind of racist against Shuras. Lee's is like Shuras, I hate him. We should kill him. Even though we've seen that it's not necessarily a case that Shuras are just born bad or anything. Asha, I'm always questioning because some things Asha does are like, am, are we gonna get some big reveal that Asha's super evil? And then sometimes I'm like, oh no, Asha's got to be a good guy right? Um, so I'm always back and forth. Same with Gantarva here, where Gantarva tries to do a lot of good, but Gantarva's a tragic character who tries to do good and then just keeps ending up doing bad, and I like characters like that. There are a lot of characters like that in a lot of series where they're trying to be good, they're trying to do good, but they end up doing a lot of bad. Um, even Marana, again, Marana's somebody who it seems like has wiped out so many humans doing the Red Sky stuff, he's just seemingly because again it's at zero dead at Lisa's village he seemingly killed a bunch of regular humans but when it comes to the way that people treat haves and the way that they treat the lesser shuras marana's like way nicer to them than most like a lot of the like greater shuras that we've seen like the nastika rakshasa the humanoid ones are kind of just like the lesser shura or food basically for us to eat and get stronger and evolve but marana has actually been like merciful multiple times and caring towards these like lesser like animal type shura so again we've seen marana seemingly slaughtering humans but is kinder than most shura to the lesser shura so everything's conflicted but i would think that agni the whole reason I started talking about this, Agni is probably the most good character we've seen. Agni is always trying to look for a peaceful solution and help people rather than just hurt them. Even people that try to hurt Agni first, Agni tries to find a peaceful solution with. Um, so that just got me thinking about that that he is like the most peaceful so far he's still in this situation looking for a way to try to settle things as peacefully as possible with gantarva and the humans might mess that up because from their perspective it's like whoa this giant monster is attacking us and then i wonder if that's him thinking of brilith i was like because of the hair i was thinking like flashback because of the graininess but with that hair, it's Brilith. Like, I was thinking maybe flashback to her mother or somebody else from the past, but no, it's just Brilith. Damn it. We see more of these transcendental attacks. Brilith isn't recovering her vigor fast enough. It'd be nice if she stops worrying about me and just went to sleep. The good thing is that because Gantarva's not sane now, his intelligence is very low. Dodging his attacks is easy, along with provoking him and leading him off. But the problem is, no matter how much I try to lure him out, he just won't move away from the city. Why? Why did he take Shuriform here? And why is he not getting further away from the city? And we see Teo's body encased in ice. It took me a while to figure out uh, who it was. To be continued. Okay. So then, very 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 good chapter absolutely loving kubera let's go check out the afterword this week gotta make sure i actually flip over to the correct proper right uh, screen here uh we have text not translated we have when i try to draw agni larger we can only see a small section of gantarva when i draw gantarva larger we can't see agni this fight was pretty much like that agni is actually 188 centimeters tall i think that's the same height as me uh, but he doesn't look big at all. Gantarva's, uh, far, Gantarva's far away, so I can get more of him to show. Then Rish is back. She has many god-class items, so she wouldn't be a character who would only appear once. But nobody expected or even looked forward to her reappearance. <laughs> the least looking shocked. The main character. Okay, just glancing over that. Either way, though, very, very fun stuff. Let's go on to episode 63 or episode 64 also just some like miscellaneous kubera discussion before i continue on uh after last week i was like talking a lot with some of you about kubera and one thing that i noticed when watching again by Prima's uh reactions to AAA rank magician and I was rereading AAA rank magician on my own i noticed that on their paperwork and stuff 
um, Kurigam was actually using kanji, hanji, hanji, um, for like the Chinese characters for the elements on the different like paperwork and licenses and stuff. And some of the choices were interesting. Like fire is just the symbol for fire. Water is the one for water. Now I only know kanji. I only know the Japanese context. So the context might be a little bit different coming from a Korean or Chinese perspective. And that might be the way that Kurigam is looking at them. Um, but at least coming from what I know, it's interesting the symbol for sky that's used in Asha's um, Asha's attributes. The symbol for sky is heaven instead of just like normal sky or whatever. It's the symbol for heaven is used. And that's interesting because so far sky as an element has just looked kind of like lightning to me. Uh, I guess it makes sense that it's just kind of a lightning element or maybe it's more broad and it's like storms and stuff but I just haven't seen enough yet. Uh, some of the other ones that were neat though is the kanji, the symbol used for the element of creation is the kanji for construct. So again, that's cool. Construct, that makes sense from how we've seen the magic work so far. And the one that really, really, really caught my eye was the kanji, the symbol used for Chandra. And I was like, oh, it's really interesting that that's what Kurigam's using because it's not yummy. It's not the darkness that like most, if you're playing like a JRPG or you're watching anime and stuff, usually the element of darkness uses like Yami, the kanji for like elemental darkness there, but the uh, the one that Kurigam uses is Kura. The one that Kurigam uses is just the symbol for dark as in man it's dark out here or man it's dark in here and that makes so much sense since I don't oh yeah I, I do remember Bhavati Chandra that was used to amplify spells back in Night at Rain Fire. But Hoti Chandra, we saw at the very beginning, was used to conceal your presence. So it's like using the symbol for darkness, or like to be like dark as in it's dark out here or dark in here, makes the concealing presence spell make a lot more sense that that's the way Kurigam is viewing the dark element. So I thought that some of that was neat and interesting. But uh, yeah, with that little mini discussion, let's, uh, let's go and start reading this chapter. Here, I brought all the god class items I have that should be quite useful. There are simple attack types, defense types, magic support types, special effect types, every type you can think of. This weapon is... Ah, I knew you had an eye for good items. That's called a Vajra. It's the god class item made by Indra, the god of the sky. There were five of them in different shapes, and that one is specialized for Hoti Indra spells. But it's not the best one for you to use, Asha. Requiring silent magic is one thing, and it's also quite heavy for its size. So... And then she starts twirling it around. What's heavy? N never mind. We have Frozen Tears, Part 7. If I had known you had something like this, I would have asked, asked for it instead of the neutral bow. It's not too late to buy it. 200,000 gold will do. <laughs> and then, at first I thought... Is that a, uh, is that like the edge of a curry gum sticking out? Um, at first I thought she was tossing it back into the box after hearing that. Two thousand, or two hundred thousand is too much. I'll just borrow it for now and return it later. Now everyone, don't just stare at the items. Take what you need. It, is it really okay? I never imagined that I would get to use a god class item in my life. By the way, what should I take? All of these are really famous. We don't have time to choose. Just take one with the right attributes for you. <laughs> I'm writing down who's taking what, so you'd better take good care of the items. If you lose any of them, I'll send you a bill with a price I want. If you die, Miss Reesh, does that mean there will be no one to pay back? <laughs> the dark and edgy Asha. I freaking love her. W well, Roosh would collect the money if I'm not present. No, I'm, I'm gonna live. I won't die. Don't say something so terrible. I was only saying because you don't seem to be strong enough to protect yourself when you've provided the god-level items to the others. I'll take care of myself. Ah, I see. Asha, how great is that item? Is it more powerful than the neutral bow? It depends on the situation. For now, we'll have to give the neutral bow t er, that Ron holds to Yuda in order to make good use of it. Lise, where's the bag that Ron was carrying? And he's <laughs> taken out of commission. Huh? Bag? What bag? Alright, the black one. 
Mm, I guess it fell off on our way here. It's probably somewhere under that water by now, I guess. <laughs> but what about it? Don't tell me the bow was in the bag or something. The bow was too big to be inside the bag. The size of the bow can be reduced. How else did you think Ron was carrying it around this whole time? And then, you could have told me earlier. Again, I do feel like this is a constant type of thing where <laughs> Lee's never knows anything. But Lee's is... It started out where Lee's would just constantly... Every time something was weird, Lee's tries to justify it to herself. She's like, oh, I must not have heard them correctly. Or, oh, I must have missed out on this. Or, oh, they must be using... Like when she sees Agni or God Kubera do something crazy. Oh, they must be using magic. Oh, it must be a magic item or magic clothing. And more and more, she just started to get chewed out and yelled at for not knowing these things. And we're, see it, we're seeing it kind of hit her where nobody taught her these things, nobody told her these things, and yet she's just being expected to know them. Like she's kind of getting chewed out for being like, ah, well, the bow just, or the bag just dropped, the bow couldn't be in it, so who cares? Which, I mean, you probably still shouldn't want to uh, let the uh, bag just go. If, or if you see something like that happening, you should probably say something. But... Despite that, this could have all been solved by just letting her know that information ahead of time. I'm sorry. I didn't know that. I would have taken good care of the bag if I knew. So again, it's like she messed up, but at the same time, she wasn't really told beforehand. Forget it. It's not like the bow's going to come back on its own, even if you regret it. It's a shame, but we'd better forget about it and find some other way. It was all my fault, so I'll go find it. You think that even makes sense? How are you going to find it underwater? And Lise has already run off. Ah, that was ridiculous. Honestly, it's the fault of the person who hadn't told her that the bow was in the bag, isn't it? <laughs> Says Rish, um, instigating. But say, er, but that girl ran out to find it, saying that it was her fault. Should I say she's stupid, or what? Anyhow, hurry and go after her. She may not be able to ever come back if you don't. We're still seeing... This clash above her. That's a really good shot. That's a really good panel. Yuda? Yuda, are you here? Please come out. And we have Claude looking. Hiding isn't going to solve anything. Whether it's because of your growing pains or the Shura that appeared just now, you can't solve anything by running away. Ah, oh well. And it feels like we've barely seen any of this Claude and Yuda stuff. This is like really interesting stuff that it feels like we're barely seeing. I guess I'll have to join the other magicians without you. Just keep hiding yourself if you want. Although Lee's may die while you're hiding. I, I'm just saying this because I don't want you to get me wrong. I didn't mean that I'll kill her. I mean she may die from an accident. Then, Yuda is awakened. Very, very easy to, um, to figure out. You, you don't need to stare at me like that with such scary eyes. I was only saying that it might happen. Think about it. Although she still had quite some lifespan left, judging from how she looked when I used Hotiyama on her, there's no guarantee she'll even survive till then. The moment a Hotiyama shows is inevitable death, which comes after you survive all other dangers in your life. The time, or it's the... It's the, the, it's the moment when the god of death crosses your name out from hell in person. So, or so-called a natural death for the old, or a heart attack for the young. So this is when Lees would naturally die at the age that we saw her at. But there are many cases where people die before that. For instance, if there's a Shura attack like now, people may die before their lifespan is over. So what we saw was the natural lifespan of Lees. So let's go back for Lees' sake. You need to fire the neutral bow. Of course she may have looked young, because I think that Lise is basically going to become a god. I think that when you have the power of the name, again, not just being named after a god, but having the power of the name, I think that eventually the old 
god holding that name dies out and the new god holding that name has all the power eventually. I think as Lise continues to grow, she's going to get more of the power of god Kubera and the old god Kubera is going to fade until Lise is the new god Kubera. At least that's my personal theory. So that might be why she looks like that, is because she's just never going to age past that, because by the time she gets there, she's going to be a god, essentially. You need to fire the neutral bell. Even if it cannot be er, one decisive blow, it could be a help to the god if you try your best. True, if he could destroy one of those huge pillars, then firing the bow could definitely do something to Gantarva, you would think. Uh, of course you may not want to help the god, but it might save your Lees, whom you want more than any other thing. What's with that look on your face? Don't tell me you wouldn't mind even if it's just Lees' dead body or something. He shakes his head. Thank god. Then, now, er, then let's go back now. Lees, please stay alive. You must stay alive. You can't die. You can't die. You must never be die to the hands of someone else. To be continued. And of course, it's because he knows some future stuff. Okay, before we continue, <laughs> let's go and check out the afterward. Afterward this time, says Kurigam apologizing for being late. Uh, that fire is not a new transcendental, it's just an effect of Agni's barrier slash closed space. Then the five Vajra. She's only borrowing it for a short time, but Asha's now holding a weapon. It's an item to alter Hodiendra magic. There were a lot of people who wanted to buy it before now, but they gave up because it was ridiculously expensive. Then Ron Sirefe, 37 years old, university graduate to be, is being excluded. I was going to draw something within the two framed pictures if I had some time, but it was only in my imagination that I would have any free time, so <laughs> they became pictures that can be filled with your own imagination. <laughs> Cackling emoji. Okay, very fun. Another really, 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 really great chapter. And of course, I did the thing. Dang it, I forgot to flip over to where you can actually see. Okay, this is the afterwards. You can actually see it. I messed up again. Oh, well. Either way, um, let's go to uh, episode 65. 65 starts with the sword and Lisa's shoes. I think the bag fell off around here when we were climbing up the cliff. Could it be under here? Ah. Thank god, I found it faster than I thought. That was really quick. Now I'll just throw this away, lifting a giant boulder as if it's nothing, and get the bag. It starts floating away again. I, what? Where's it going? Jeez, I'm running out of breath. But if I miss it here, I may never find it again. That cannot happen. That's my dad's relic. And it's something we really need right now. If I lose it, then... Is there anything you do right? You're useless. No, I've got to get it. I need to get it, and it's going away, but she's grabbed uh, Asha? Asha is not in the best shape for swimming, uh, seemingly missing an arm, at least from what we know so far, and wearing very uh, thick, cumbersome clothing that would not be very fun to swim in, though I guess she can theoretically just teleport out of there. Though it would be a little bit of a waste of teleporting magic. Frozen Tears, Part 8. Lisa's coughing. Uh, Asha, why did you stop me? The pack was right there in front of me. If I'd gone a bit deeper, I could or I could have got the... Slap. Do you really want to die or something? Hit me back if you feel this is unfair. And she's bleeding. Ah, no. I don't think it's unfair. It's my fault I lost the bag. And I couldn't even get it back. You think it's the bag I'm angry about? Is it not? Then is it because I left before you finished talking? No. Th then because I made your clothes wet? No, that's not it. Why do you only think like that? That's because I'm just a burden. I'm sorry. It's all my fault. Everything's my fault. I'll do everything you say. So, Asha, don't hate me. Jeez, this is such a good scene. We're finally getting this conversation between the two of them. And I really, God, I really hope this doesn't get cut short by Asha not 
properly answering her. I really, really need Asha to say, no, the problem is you keep putting yourself in danger. You keep doing things that would get you killed. And I know, you know, me as a reader, it's like, I know God Kubera said, you can't really get killed of your own accord, but you keep, like, Lise keeps doing things time and time again that could very easily get her killed. And Asha doesn't want that. So I really hope Asha properly tells her, don't leave me. Hoti Yasvins. And she's healing her. Huh? D does this mean you're forgiving me? Whatever you do, watch what's going on around you before you do it. While you were only staring at the bag, you passed the checkpoint. That means we've clum er, come outside the closed space. So we need to go back through the checkpoint in order to get back. But since the checkpoint's already underwater, we can't go through it. We need to go through another checkpoint on top to get back to the city. Uh, I see. Things have become complicated because of me, and that's what made you angry. I said that's not it. Forget it. Whatever made me angry, let's stop wasting our time talking about I really wish Asha would just tell her so that we, like this could kind of be settled a little bit. We're already outside anyway. So we better find a way to take care of that thing first. That thing? Don't tell me you mean... You must be joking me. And we're seeing... <laughs> Holy shit. Just more shots of just the massive, 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 massive Gandharva. It looks huge even from this far. How are we going to take care of it? Something's odd about the water flow since earlier. Did you realize that you were being swept here really fast along with the bag? Really? <laughs> she, didn't, she couldn't even tell. It must have something to do with that Shura. I'm sure that the water is being drawn toward that point to be consumed for some reason. Is the Shura drinking the water or something? Drinking. Well, yeah, you can put it that way. Probably, if we can block the flow, it'll, infl er, it'll inflict a huge amount of damage on that Shura. Stopping the flow. Do we need to bring Ron here? He fainted, and it's impossible for a human to block all this much water anyway. Then, the god fighting over there is the only one who can do it. He's the strongest of all gods of fire, although he's being summoned by a human at the moment. He should still be able to evaporate the ocean temporarily. That's crazy. That is insane. But wouldn't he already know it since it's something we know? The water didn't start to flow fast from the beginning, and there was no big change on the surface of the water. So he wouldn't know unless he goes into the water, and the god of fire doesn't like going underwater. The problem is, how we'll manage to let him know about this. Me, I'll do it. Shall I go up somewhere high and hang a banner? A banner? There's a more certain way than that. We see, it looks like Agni avoiding attacks. This is good. Belith must be asleep or something. Her vigor is recovering much faster than earlier. Shall I wait for it to, er, shall I wait for a bit more, or for it to be recharged, then start my attack? And he sees the screaming, presumably Lee's thrown with, um, Bhavati Vayu, I think is what she used back in the test to, uh, toss Willith up into the air. What is that? Is that a magician trying to help me? Having such, uh, strong faith is all good, but it's dangerous to interfere in this fight, lady. Agni, I, I, I'm so sorry. I wasn't trying to interfere, but someone just threw me up in the air so well. Uh, and is she going to actually recognize him? Idi okay, she is. Good. Idiot Smith. Though, of course, it could have still been funny if she didn't. But I like that she did recognize him. I think that's good. Okay, very fun twist. Very cool. I like this chapter a lot, and I do like the conversation and character stuff we got with Lise and Asha. Even though it could get deeper, this is a very long series, and so, you know, we just got a little bit here. Either way, though, let's go read the afterword. This one says, this is a webtoon where you can't say that you shouldn't be the main character. <laughs> if you look behind Lise, there are submerged buildings. Let's just believe that everyone was carried to safety. That'll make us all feel better. Uh, then, whenever I color Agni yellow, I keep thinking about my friend, Mr. Bogus. In Season 1, Episode 82, someone made a comment that he looks like he has jaundice. <laughs> okay, and that's all for the afterward. So, let's go read Episode 66. Okay, last up this week we have, Would you like to know why I'm fighting while putting my life on the front line? I'll tell you the answer. 
but it won't be the answer that you'd like to hear. I had no family to protect, even from the beginning of this path, nor did I have the obligation for revenge. Despite all that, my fight still goes on because protecting this name is my duty until the end. We're seeing more shots of future Lees in this situation. Are you disappointed? Because it's not to save many other lives? No. Then, you must have known already what my answer would be. Now we have Frozen Tears Part 9. Idiot Smith. I mean, I'm sorry. You look exactly like someone I know. Uh, maybe it's rude to say that he looks like a human. Uh, of course you're much more handsome, but it's just something about you feels like... Um, I mean, no, I guess my eyes are just stupid. Again, we have the self-gaslighting from Lee's. I'm really sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Anyway, Agni, the water down there is... And it looks like an attack coming from behind. He has to get her out of the way. Th thank you. Anyway, Agni, the water down there is being drawn toward the Shura, so I need to stop it. <laughs> her face... Ah, uh, yes, that's it. You already knew. Nope, I didn't. I just found out. Thanks for telling me. Oh, is it because he can see what she's thinking because of insight? And also, is the scene that we got there a future Lee's because he was like, pretty much any time we get these future Lee's scenes or when she's around a god, is that because of the f like future leaking to us because of the insight? Okay. Let's see. Will I still be or will I be able to evaporate? Will I be able to stall some time if I evaporate the water till the end of that side? I guess that won't stall even for a moment of time since he's not going to stand there and just watch. Um just throw me over or throw me toward the woods over there. I probably won't die anyway since I'm so durable. Your body may be durable, but your heart's all torn into pieces. I managed to soothe a little kid her little kid's heart who was crying like she'd lost the whole world yet. I wonder what she'd gone through during that or during the time. She's crying harder than before. If you keep crying, only from the inside like that, you may eventually forget how to cry for real. So just cry out loud. Cry if you want to. No one is going to say anything about it. She starts tearing up. It really was you, Idiot Smith. See? What a crybaby you are. You must have been holding it or er, holding it to yourself for so long that you couldn't even shed tears. You're only 17, yet your heart's so torn. You must have no one to share your sorrow with. I wish I could buy you a mushroom ske er, skewer, but this isn't the right time for it. He lands. Look, I'll tell you this one thing so that you don't feel too lonely. Although your life will be rough, there will be someone who will stay with you until the end. Okay, and we see a hand, so then we have to question, if this is the future, and if for some reason the future can't be changed, who is the person who stays with her? Is it going to be God Kubera? I doubt it. Is it going to be Asha? Potentially. Is it going to be Yuda? That's also a likely one. Who is that? Well, probably. Someone who cherishes you very much. And he goes away. Cherishes me. I had no idea. Who could it be? Okay, now. I've got to check out where you're using all this water, Guntarva. We see the water start to boil. And start to evaporate. Everything is drying out. So, consuming the water had something to do with this Shuralization after all. But, something's a bit odd. The water appeared after he took Shura form. Something like this wouldn't be required for surrealization. Unless he was trying to take in the water to use the water magic Shura transcendental power to try to revive Teo or something. Well, taking Shura form here is a regular in itself from the beginning. Anyhow, this is my chance. Before we take Shura form again. And we see him crying. Agni stops for a moment and gets hit with the transcendental. To be continued. <laughs> Jeez, I don't want to stop, but then I know there's four more entire chapters. Okay, so I guess this is the end, you know, for this week. It's a little on the shorter side. Unless I just want to push, have a super long video, but it's already after 10 p.m. Hmm, I'm torn. 
no, you know, we're going we're still going to be doing Kubera every single week. I'll end it here for now. Let's go read the afterword though. The afterword for this one is short too. We see the combination of somber eyes and the red background makes this look like a horror scene. Uh, Agni and Lisa's bodies are close and touching, but nobody's blushing. Do you know that they almost kissed each other by drinking from the same bottle? They didn't care about it, and so forgot about it. And it looks like most of the readers forgot about it as well. And then the rest of the text isn't translated. Okay. Well, thank you so much for watching, for being here. Let me go back over here. Thank you so, so much. Going to end it here. Gonna go edit and everything. I really hope you enjoyed. I loved it. I have been loving Kubera every single week. It's so, so good. Um absolutely adore the series i want to talk about it more so i can't wait to catch up more but yeah for this week we'll do four next week and then i think the next section is 10 chapters if so i'll do it in five and five and then yeah we'll just continue from there with that all aside thank you so much for being here thank you for watching like if you did like the video comment down there to tell me what you thought of these chapters my first thoughts and reaction subscribe for more kubera much 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 more on the channel follow on twitter if you want if you want to link to the discord server it's free and open for anyone if you want to help support the um help support the channel by dropping a super thanks it's appreciated if you want to help um support the channel and also get your name at the end of every video and get one piece videos early hit join down below to become a member or go to patreon.com slash haku of the tubes or a link will be in the description to become a patron thank you so so much to people who are already patrons and channel members thank you to chosen regular evan holly magical girls fr nono abyss knight ja and the d band jared and students david langstaff and folded ghoul slayer candidates sg and stan cedar and pure element patio Thank you so, so much for your support. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time.